Okay, so welcome everyone to another webinar session from WiseLine Academy. Today we're going to talk about portfolio building. And first of all, I want to introduce ourselves to you. So here with me, it's a very talented visual designer. It's Emilio Uribe. I'm going to let him to speak by himself. Thank you very much. Yeah, as Oliver said, uh, my name is Emilio Uribe. Uh, I'm a visual designer here at WiseLine. I've been working here for a year. Uh, part of my responsibilities are working with our brand and also adding value to our clients' projects through brand and, and strategic uh, brand perception. And myself, I'm Oliver Gonzalez. I'm a UI designer here at WiseLine. I've been here like for uh, four months or so, and, but I've been focused my career on UX and UI design for the last four years. And you can uh, look for us on our social, social media channels that we have uh, on our slides. And before all that, uh, we want to give a quick recap about the last uh, webinar that you saw. It was about writing case studies. And if you remember, Arturo Rios and Bernice Beltran uh, gave us uh, very good tips and good practices about writing case studies. And since this is going to be the last webinar of this uh, series, uh, we also want to give a quick recap about the, all the webinars that we saw. That is correct. So first one was personal branding, where we figure out a little bit of uh, how to project our reputation and how to make sure that our purpose and motivations are uh, driven through every material that we put out there, how to reach our audiences and how to tell a story. And then we move on to um, choosing your projects, which is was a little bit of an uh, audience and how to figure out non-disclosure agreements and, and how to choose your best projects. And uh, last one, which uh, we just mentioned, which was how to create specifically the case studies that we're gonna we're gonna figure out what to do with today. So this uh, session is gonna be um, the closing session. Which um, I need to remind you to that if you attended every single session and you um, give us. Um, if I can fill the form, you can then submit your own portfolio before um, the 28th of this month, and uh, one of our experts will review it and give you feedback directly. So why don't we jump into our webinar? Yes, as we mentioned before, today we're going to talk about uh, building your own portfolio, and this is going to be the agenda for today's webinar. Uh, we're going to start about uh, and talking about what's a portfolio and what is not a portfolio. This might be very obvious, but it is a cool way to start the conversation. Uh, we're all go also going to talk about uh, researching your market and knowing your market. And we're going to talk about building the portfolio itself and how you will be able to showcase your skills. That is correct. Feel free to join the conversation via Slack, send us your questions. In between each one of these sections, we're gonna leave uh, five minutes uh, of time to address those questions. Don't worry in case that we have um, we don't have enough time to, to get them. We're gonna go through them at the end of this um, whole webinar. So uh, be patient and stay with us. And let's jump in. Cool. So to begin this uh, webinar, uh, we want to give you a definition of what is a portfolio. But before that, what's not a portfolio? And as I mentioned before, this might be very obvious, but we also, uh, it is also a common mistake out there to put in your portfolio a lot of information. So what's not your portfolio? It is not your resume nor your curriculum vitae because you wouldn't want to put in there all your background experience and all your background academic uh, information and all the tools that, that you are good at. Uh, and you won't put in there also uh, information about how you're good at and a job position and you won't direct that to a specific person. That's why it, it, would be, it wouldn't be a cover letter. That's true. But think about if it's not these things, that doesn't mean it cannot take things uh, or virtues from these uh, two specific uh, formats. Uh, first is that as a resume, like a resume, it will help you express your work experience, but you're gonna do it through your projects and your knowledge uh, on them. And it's not a cover letter, but consider this portfolio a way to get get you closer to your interviewer and, and your reader. Um, the end goal of this is uh, to make them interested in you. Yes. So let's jump into it. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, as we mentioned before, your portfolio won't be this kind of documents, but they, the, your portfolio might have some of those features. 
but we want to define a portfolio as a way or a place or a platform, whatever that platform would be, uh, to showcase your projects and to showcase those projects that you are really, really proud of. That is correct. And um, remember, we said this before in, in past webinars, but uh, a portfolio is all about um, how you got to the results you're showing. So remember that a solution without context um, doesn't allow the readers or your interviewers to really understand what was happening and if your decision or, or the way you solved the problems uh, was the correct one. So remember, it's all about good design is all about context. You need to know what are you solving to know if the solution was correct. Exactly. And as mentioned before, do you want to uh, maybe use your portfolio as a document where you will be able to uh, merge uh, or write or direct your audience to those other type of documents like your resume, your curriculum vitae, etc. by putting maybe a hyperlink or something like that in a brief introduction about yourself. That's true. You never know how far these things are going to go. And um, you want to always keep your portfolio, uh, give it the ability to, 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 to be able to trace it back to you. So always put at least a uh, hyperlink maybe to a uh, curriculum, maybe to your social networks and, and to everything you have in your uh, professional atmosphere that you want to showcase. Yes. And going back to the fact that you wouldn't want to put in your portfolio like all your background experience and all your projects you have made uh, during your professional career, we have this quote to reinforce that that says, a long list of relevant skills, the tools you use, and how many years of experience you have is of no real benefit to your visitors or your audience or for that person that is going to read your portfolio. So what matters in here is, how, is to show how you solve some uh, center designs uh, projects or necessities and to tell them how you got from a point A to a point B. So sure. for that, we're going to move to our next uh, object that is knowing your market. So as mentioned before in, in, in past webinars, this is uh, we have uh, a lot, a lot because it is very important to know uh, for what kind of company or for what kind of audience you are building your portfolio. You might be building your portfolio for maybe a role where uh, um, illustration abilities are going to be needed or for maybe uh, graphic design or UI design where you uh, might put in there how you created some libraries or color palettes or made some micro interactions. But since we are talking here about UX uh, designers portfolios in a UX design approach, you want to put in your portfolio some uh, case studies uh, to, to showcase how you resolve some necessities in this kind of projects. Also an important thing is to always research for what kind of company you're creating your portfolio because your tone of voice is going to be created for that kind of company. That is correct. Now you might be thinking, um, are we suggesting that you create a specific uh, custom tailored portfolio for each company that you apply to? Well, maybe. It could be a very, very strong point. Um, and if that sounds like too much work, maybe think about it as a design system for your portfolio. Um, you can figure out uh, a certain number of, of uh, case studies that you have and then put them in or take them out according to where you're gonna present it to. Cool. And that led us to the good stuff about this webinar and how to build your portfolio. So <clears throat> one of the main questions that we might have when the time comes to create uh, your own portfolio would be what kind of projects to put in there. And we were talking about this earlier, uh, about thinking uh, about your next job on the job that will help you to create your career path or that will help you to get uh, to the things you want to do and you love to do. So one recommendation from our side will be to, no, to not put it in your portfolio things or projects that you are not proud of or that you don't like because that will take you maybe to a project or a role that where you are going to make the same of of the same stuff. So always have in mind that and select your projects that you really, really like and that you are really proud of. That is correct. And uh, on top of that, yes. maybe some people are wondering, you know, I don't have that much projects uh -huh. and some, I have some that I didn't like that much. 
don't stress about it either. Remember that this portfolio is definitely the hook that you're going to get the conversation started with your interviewers, but everything that happens next uh, is up to you. So definitely bring, bring that to the conversation. Tell them what you love to do. Tell them what you don't like doing and uh, don't stress too much about it. Yes, exactly. And as mentioned before, uh, try to showcase those projects that you are really, really proud of. And we are insisting in this so much because when someone uh, shows or tells uh, something that they're proud of or that they really, really like, it shows. And you can tell when someone uh, dedicated like a lot of time in, in a project or in, in a design because you will notice the quality and you will notice how they are expressing about that project in their storytelling. And you might even notice on the details, on those little details that they really put like a lot of effort on that. So this is a recommendation to select or, or to take a look at your projects and choose that those that you really liked and that you are really proud of. That is correct. It's also not, not uncommon for uh, interviewers to ask you to present one of these projects um, live to what could possibly be your peers in the future. And um, when you do it with passion, it shows. And yes. if you structure these case studies with that in mind, you already um, have the way there um, to this point in, in interviews where you could present um, this to your, to your audience. And this uh, also raises a question, which is quality or quantity? Exactly. And that's something that uh, you might have heard also on our previous webinars, uh, maybe on the Shooting Projects webinar, uh, where it's not going to be about, about quantity, but it's going to be about quality. So if you have like these three super cool projects that are very robust to show your, your skills and to show uh, how you resolve them, if there are only three projects don't feel bad because there will be enough for your audience to tell them how many abilities and skills you have to solve this kind of, of, of project. So remember, it's always about quality and not about quantity. And on the topic of abilities, uh, we recommend you to try to be diverse. Mm, imagine that you have two, two very strong projects that cover um, almost the same amount of skills or the same process. Um, we would recommend you to vary, even if, even if other projects are not that strong um, and there's nothing wrong with consistency, the, you're trying to showcase as much as you can and, and as much uh, information that fits your narrative and the story you want to tell about your professional persona and how is it going to fit your new company. Also, it could help you a lot to figure out what specifically, what specifically they are asking in their, um, in their careers page. Yes. So you can maybe tailor some of the content around that if you want that job. And that, go, that goes back to always research for what kind of sure. role you are playing, right? Sure. Um, and also, uh, uh, go, going back to the, to the quantity, be careful to not bore your audience. Uh, be careful to not put in there uh, like 10 projects or uh, eight projects that won't tell anything. Or be careful to not be like super heavy text uh, when telling your case studies. Because always have in mind that the person who is reading your portfolio or that is taking a look at your uh, case studies, that it's not the only uh, project or, or portfolio that they're going to look like uh, at. They're going to have like a list of other portfolios to look at. So always have in mind to be, uh, to get to the point and to don't bore your audience. True, and this all uh, goes back to content strategy, which is what do you wanna show to who, um, when and how so always um stay on track be direct um go straight to the point and we're going to give you um a list of recommendations but first we're going to start with a with an interesting quote that we find yes just to reinforce that uh to not burn your audience uh and this um quote is for is from tobias van schneider who is the simply founder uh simply is a platform that you might be uh used to create your portfolio and we're going to talk about that later but he says i want to understand your process but i don't need to know your persona better than i know my own mother so this might be funny but this might be true uh to not be careful to not put like a lot of information in your portfolio because it will be overwhelming to your audience that is true so then should i do the exact opposite and just throw images and, and make it super flashy to be very visual yeah 
I think you will need to maybe find the balance and avoid to just put like a bunch of images in your portfolio without context. The idea in here is to tell a story uh, for each case study uh, and maybe to try balance text with images. But as mentioned before, the idea will be to uh, use images as, uh, as elements that will complement how you resolve some necessities or how you get to one phase to another phase in a project. So always have that in mind. Not too much images, but not too much text. Always have the right tools and the right images to tell a great story. That is correct. And remember that everything that's in your portfolio should be there for a reason, for yes. a purpose. So images that are not self-explanatory definitely need some context and images that are don't need it. So figure out the balance and this goes with text as well. Make sure that you're telling uh, the, your story in a compelling way. And remember, as we said before, you can always test it. Um, make, make some peers or friends or, or, or people that collaborate with you read it and then tell you their pointers. What did they take out of, of each case study? And then you can figure out if you are telling the story you want to tell. Yes, it's all about iteration, right? To right. show to your peers. Uh, some of your friends, and if they have got feedback, uh, apply that kind of feedback if it if it adds value to your portfolio. True. And also, I, we were uh, we are mentioning case studies. Why? You remember the webinar, the last webinar that we had, where uh, Arturo and 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 better talk about uh, running case studies. Is because a portfolio will be formed or conformed by case studies. And if we remember what a case study is, is a description. Uh, an exploratory analysis of a project, how you resolve those uh, necessities, how you got from point A to point B, and what kind of skills you used. That is correct. And we've said this in, in this webinar, and we said it a lot in, in previous webinars, it's all about the process behind. Why did you took the decisions um, you made? So be very mindful of that. Um, Tell a story. We're going to get into examples later on how yes. you can do that. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to give a couple of quick recommendations to start. Yes. Uh, when show point, when show point case in each project, uh, always have in mind, as mentioned before, that they have like a lot uh, of portfolios to look at. So be um, careful to uh, and consider their time. Get to the point in a fast way and not to bore them. Also, uh, try to be unique. Uh, this is uh, a recommendation. Try to make your audience smile so they will uh, spot you and they will remember you. But always get to the point and be uh, brief so you can tell uh, in a quick way the, the, the decisions you made in, 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 in a project. So always ask yourself if you enjoy reading your own case study. If not, your audience probably won't either because they don't know you. So always have that in mind to be empathetic yeah. uh, to your audience and, and to make them, uh, uh, and make them remember you by reading your portfolio. True. And also think about that uh, the container is part of the message, which this means is that, and it goes, it's a callback to the first webinar of personal branding. Um, it's all about how you're presenting and um, who are you? And not, not only through your, your case studies, but through the whole experience that your user is having by reading your portfolio. As you can see in the screen, we, we have a couple um, examples that we thought they were very creative. You can see there are very simple ones, uh, or very flashy ones. And remember that uh, you have to think about navigation, how they're gonna find the information, that everybody, everything is gonna be super clear, how to get back to other projects, what information are you showing at uh, which time. So definitely um, try to think of your container or your platform or your PDF as, as part of your media and, and as part of the message that you're going to convey to your audience. You mentioned, for example, to be clear um, um, and clean and neat, and that takes us to uh, design principles, right? Yep. Which we're going to talk later about that uh, so you can apply in your portfolio. Right. So uh, do you have questions? Do you have something you want to add? Uh, we can hear you through the Slack channel. That is correct. We're gonna give five minutes, so you can um, type us your questions via Slack and we'll be answering them. If we, then again, if we don't have the time to cover them, we're gonna uh, have them at the end of, of the webinar. So we're gonna lay back and chill a little bit and let you um, type these questions. And if not, we're gonna move on in a, a couple of minutes. Cool.
Okay, I think we can move on. Yeah, we can move on. If there's not in queue, uh, super. We can move on. So um, the time to speak about showcasing your skills has come. And how do you want to showcase your skills? By telling how you did it, how you resolve a problem. And for that, what you want to do is to give context to your audience. How are you going to give context to your audience to tell that you get from point A to point B? And to give enough context is to explain what point A means. You might, point A, me, point a might mean that you started from uh, the beginning of a project, maybe on um, discovery sessions with clients, or point A might mean that uh, you started in a project uh, in the middle of a project or at the end of a project. We all have been there, right? When you got into a project when it's already started or when it's ending. So always give that kind of context and always tell how you get to the point B, whatever that path was. Maybe it was through um, making some wireframes or sketching or making interviews or making some uh, prototypes, etc. So the idea in here is to showcase your skills to give by giving enough context of how you got from one point to the other one to the end point that might be a functional product or might be whatever uh, phase was that you ended in a project. That is correct. And you might be thinking, uh, maybe I'm not that good at storytelling. Um, just stick to the main points of, of, of the project. There's gonna be definitely some highlights you can remember or some um, decisions that you could take that were game changers to this project. So definitely have them in mind. But more than that, be mindful of the sequence of the story, right? Yes. Like you said, going from a, point A to point B, Let's not make a mess and keep everything straightforward, and that's going to help you a lot. Yes. We're going to share with you um, uh, Oliver's portfolio or, or, a, or a piece of it, yes. which has an interesting story behind it. Yes, uh, to show you an example of how, of how was my personal experience when uh, the time came for me to build my portfolio. Uh, and this is a super cool story, and we can say that it's like a success story because with this portfolio, I got into Wiseline, and uh, and that's the reason I'm here uh, speaking with you all. So it it's like a access X story. And when that time came, uh, I was looking for a platform that would make it easy for me to share that information. Also, I was looking for a platform that would make it easy for me to edit information in that in the system, because I wouldn't uh, look in to something to uh, export every time I made a, a, a change. So I was looking also that would be easy for the users to read and navigate. And I was looking for a platform that will allow me to use images and videos because I had in my uh, documents and storage of, of past projects, videos that I wanted to show about micro interactions. And also, this, is, this was a super cool feature in the platform that I use uh, that allowed me to track who was or who were watching uh, my portfolio each, one, each, each time I send that. So, you might, uh, we, we all have been in that position when you send like your portfolio or, or, or your resume, et cetera, and you don't know if they are, they are seen or yep. you don't know that if they open your, your email. So a cool thing about this uh, platform is that every single time I send my information, I was able to see if they were looking at it. So this platform that I, that I choose, it's called Dropbox Showcase. And it's fair to say that I've been uh, saving or searching my uh, files from the past four years in Dropbox. And for those who are not familiar with Dropbox, it is a product or a platform where you are able to uh, storage your documents, any kind of files like pictures, images, videos, etc. So they have this product that it's called uh, Dropbox Showcase that it allows you to make like this kind of presentation where you choose your uh, own layout. You could put in there uh, text, images, videos, hyperlinks, 
Uh, and when you put in there like a hyperlink, it will uh, put you the, the, the media that that uh, link has. So it is a super cool, cool platform. And I choose that because uh, it, ha it had all these uh, requirements or features that I wanted. It, was, it, it is easy to share, easy to edit. Uh, it is easy to read and navigate for the audience and for myself. Uh, you can use images, videos, and uh, as mentioned before, you can see who is watching to that. That is true. And, and before we begin two notes on top of that, uh, first, we want to tell you beforehand that we're going to share more tools that yes. you can use, both free and, and paid. So you can take a look at uh, the options you have to build your portfolio. And also, um, we were talking about this yesterday, and let's be realistic. We usually craft our portfolios only when we need it, right? Yeah. But this is a bad habit. Ideally, you should create um, a habit of documentation where you, day by day or, or on weekly periods, you you track down what have you been doing for each project because you never know what, what information is going to be vital uh, eventually for your portfolio. And we're going to talk about being active even yeah. later in, in this webinar, but the fact that you are constantly um, – adding information to your database is gonna make this, um, this so much easier instead yes. of just going, what did I do the past two years in my professional life and how do I express it to, to my new employer? Yes, and our recommendation will be to, uh, besides that, besides uh, feeding all your uh, other, other, other channels, yep. to try and always document uh, every project that you are on your uh, current job or on your current projects to always document that and, and, and save or storage that kind of, of files and information. So uh, when creating my portfolio in this, uh, in this platform that it's Dropbox Showcase, I was trying to make it clear, neat, and I was trying to be super specific and get to the point in a fast way so my users would read really fast and wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't take too, too much time for them to see the projects that I showcase in there. And to be honest, I just put in there like four projects. So I was trying to get to the point in a fast way. And for each one of the case studies that I put in there, I gave context of when I started in that project, when I ended and how I ended that, and what skills I used to solve those problems. So we're going to show you like the case uh, study anatomy later on, but my portfolio, I started with a brief description about myself. And it was super brief. As you can see, there were only three rows. Uh, well, a paragraph of two rows and, and other row that I used to put like a hyperlink where they uh, will be able to go to my resume. But this brief introduction, uh, I tried to be as much as explicit to tell who I am and what I do. And this might remind you of uh, the, the elevator speech that you saw on the personal branding webinar, where uh, you can tell who you are in a super brief way. So for that introduction in my portfolio, I just put like a brief uh, paragraph of my, about myself. And if they wanted to know more about me, about my background experience or academic background, we have this link that will take, you, that will take them to my LinkedIn profile. True, and I get to praise you on, on this screen in particular because it, it also calls back on the personal branding. You're already adding um, a little uh, illustration, yeah. which is part of the things you like and you do, and we're going to see that later. Yes. And everything is, is super clear, and it takes, a, then again, the, the elevator pitch, yes. and what we talked about, that be, people being able to trace it back to you. So yeah. definitely, this is the way you want to start your portfolio. Yes, exactly. And that's a super uh, small detail. If you can see, I have uh, uh, above Oliver Gonzalez's portfolio, uh, a little icon that it, it adds like a personal touch. So uh, other thing that I, I was looking is to add this personal touch besides uh, those case studies that might be very, very uh, professional, right? Right. So below that brief intro about myself, I put in there a list of four case studies. And each one of these case studies have different layouts because in each one of these case studies, I wanted to communicate and highlight something different. But each one of these case studies started with a summary. And this summary had uh, and gave enough context for the users to know about what the, the project was about. 
And in the summary, I put uh, the goal for the project, uh, where I started in the project, <clears throat> and my role in the project. And also for, for like two case studies, it was possible for me to put in there a link for the punch, functional product. So they can see uh, that, uh, in this case, there, they were public websites. So in the summary, I put the link in there and they were able to see uh, the, the website uh, alive, right? Right, and um, you should be careful with this. Um, it's not uncommon that we work sometimes like in content management um, systems or products that are gonna be used and altered by clients. So definitely from time to time, check that what you want to show is what you, what you actually had in your vision. And if not, it's okay if you to put the link and, and you explain uh, the whole process behind it. Um, it always helps to, to see what the end product looks like, but it's not necessary. Yes, in fact, uh, always, uh, Samidio says, always check if your links are updated because it might happen that a uh, link is broken, right? So you wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't be a good idea to see like a broken link in your portfolio or on your resume. Right. So below each uh, case study summary, what I put in there was like different phases or different stages of a project. In this case, I put in there uh, the fact that I, for this project, I made some sketches. I made also some wireframes and then I made some prototypes to test this uh, website or this platform. Uh, and you might think that uh, in this layout, I'm showing sketches uh, like in a thumbnail. But the cool thing about Dropbox Showcase is that each one of these thumbnails are like uh, uh, big images and the user can expand those images by clicking on it. So they, will, they were able to click on an image and see a more detailed uh, information on the image and also to see uh, uh, the text that complements that image as well. Yes, this goes back to remember that uh, your platform or your container is part of the message. Exactly, yes. yes. So another layout that I use for uh, another case study that I put in my portfolio was this one. Always put a summary in there to give enough context, but I wanted to highlight uh, the fact that for this project, I created an image uh, with a wireframe, and in that wireframe uh, that I showed to the client uh, back then, I justify every single component on the homepage with text. So I wanted to highlight that, that image in this case project in my portfolio. And the reason for that, um, and for that, what I did was to put an image on a bigger size. So it will be like uh, the, the main component in this case study. So it's, how, it's always about what you are telling and how you are going to tell it and what you want to highlight in your case study. So you uh, want to have that in mind to use different layouts or use different kind of designs to highlight whatever you want to highlight. Sure. Cool. So if we go to uh, a step further and see uh, these case studies in a high level, uh, um, in a high level format, this was uh, my case study anatomy. I always show at the beginning of each case study in my portfolio a summary where I gave enough context and where I told what the goal for each project was. And below that summary, I show uh, different phases uh, uh, on the project uh, that I was involved on. For example, early sketches or high fidelity wireframes. And at the end, I always show the functional product or the, or the final design or the outcome that I have for that project. True, and uh, I gotta praise you again on, on this screen because if you are having any doubts about narrative, this is a great case of how you can do it very simply and it's nothing um, out of this world because usually this is how projects um, usually go mm -hmm. from, from early stages to a very developed product. It goes from big to, to very narrow and granular. Yes. So definitely if you have any doubts, you can use this as your go-to guide on how to build those projects. Yes, exactly. And <clears throat> so since when I uh, saw this position at WiseLine, I made my research and I noticed that they have this really, really open culture. And that gave me the cue to put in my portfolio a personal passion. So always remember it's, about researching and knowing 
to whom you are selling your information. So in this case, since Wiseland is very open and has this uh, very cool culture, uh, I put my personal passion in portfolio, which is illustration. So they will know this uh, human side of me and they will know that I really love uh, making things outside work. Uh, in this case, it's about illustration and, and it shows devotion and, and it shows passion to your audience and, the, and, and shows the fact that you have discipline to do other stuff outside uh, uh, professional hours, laboral hours. That is true. And, and to give you context on, on how this actually impacted um, Oliver's life here at Wiseline, uh, when we reviewed this portfolio and we saw that he was um, a very avid illustration um, um, doer and, and also consumer, we went right away with him and we started talking about illustration and how we could take it into our professional, professional lives. And then we started doing uh, doodle nights where we get together and illustrate together. So you never know how these things uh, are gonna impact um, your professional life, but it's, it's not all about work, right? It's, yes. it's about projecting passion and showing the things you like as well. Cool. So <clears throat> moving on, uh, we have other examples from, from, from other designers out there. Uh, for example, we have Car uh, the example of, of Carolis Cosa's portfolio. Uh, she's a product designer at Stripe. And we noticed that there, there are some patterns in how they show their projects uh, to the world. So as you can see, and if you go to, to Carolis Cosa's portfolio, which is a website, the very first thing you see at this website and at the top of the screen it's a simple sentence which, which says, Carolis Cosas is a product designer at Stripe. And it has a call to action that says more, and that call to action will take you to her LinkedIn profile. So as you can see, we have a pattern where we have like this brief introduction about the person, but in, that says enough about the person to get interested in, 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 in him or in her in this case. That is true. And what we really like about this it, is that it's a very compact portfolio. Yes. Um, she has definitely more projects that are under an archive section if you yes. want to read more, but she always keeps only four featured, which is fantastic. And um, she gives uh, these little uh, tidbits, which are um, very engaging mm -hmm. pieces of text that make you want to read more. And another thing we like is that she gives you the option to read more if that's what you're looking for specifically. So that's thinking about navigation and that's thinking about how can you get your information closer to your reader or your interviewer? Yes, exactly. So once you get into uh, uh, one of her case studies or one of her projects, the first thing that you see, it's a big paragraph that gives you context about that project. And it gives you context in a fast way and she gets to the point in a very neat and clear way. So it tells you about the project. She tells you about her role in the, in the project. In this case, uh, she was a uh, user researcher. Uh, she made prototyping and UI design. And in the same container with the, with the summary of the project, she puts in there the results of the project. So the very first thing you see when you enter into a case study detail from Carolis, you see the context of the project. And below that, you see a series of images and mockups and, and, and images of, of prototypes, et cetera, that gives you enough context about what she did and about the functional product. That's true, and you can go as, as deep as you want into the KPIs or the results that you helped the project achieve, but it's not necessary. You can put it in a very straightforward um, manner as she did. What we didn't like about this portfolio, though, is that um, she stopped giving context throughout the the, the rest of the of the case studies and then it's just a bunch of images that yes. we told we told you is kind of bad practice but um as you know no portfolio is going to be perfect so we're going to still give you what we like and we don't like about each of the of the ones that we're going to present to you so let's move to the next one yes uh this is another example from alex lacas uh he is a ux designer that have worked with uh google specifically on google maps uh, and he's an illustrator as well. Uh, you can see his portfolio uh, on the link that we are, uh, that it's on the presentation. But when you get into Alex Laka's uh, website or portfolio, the very first thing that you see, it's only a sentence that says, 
over a decade of design. What kind of uh, feelings do you get when you read this uh, phrase? I don't know. It's definitely very engaging. Uh, maybe I think about someone that was um, an early designer for web, like mm -hmm. 2.0, or even before that, and and along their career, they maybe moved to to product or services. So it's definitely eye catchy. Yes, and uh, already tells you the, probably the level of seniority that yeah. this designer can have, and. Um, and when we dive into the portfolio, we realize that it's definitely true. Yes, exactly. I mean, with only just one phrase, he's telling that he has like a lot of experience, right? Yeah. And below that, what he has, it's like a brief introduction about himself when he, when, where he tells you about himself. And we have this call to action to go to uh, its LinkedIn profile. And below that, he has the list of case studies and if you go to a uh, detail of a case study, it, it is the same pattern. You have at the top a um, uh, summary that gives you context about the case study. And below that, we have all these iterations or phases where he was uh, uh, involved on the project. That is true. And we think that this portfolio uh, has a very good balance between very flashy and good looking images and context. Uh, it's a very uh, well-written case study. And another thing we liked that it's a pattern with the past one that we show you is that it's, it, it, show, it tells you what was his role in, in, involved in, in this project. So that's important because sometimes we get to do um, things that are not necessarily what, what we're applying to, but are very valuable to, to our, our employers like uh, project management skills. Maybe you are UX, but you did some UI design. Yeah. Maybe you went and, and did some illustration or you work with um, research and you want to show that. So this is, a, this is a fast way of driving that point without getting into too much detail as well. Yes, exactly. I always remember to not overwhelm your users or your audience. Uh, with a lot of text, with a lot of information, because we are trying to get to the point in a fast way and to create that impact to your audience. Um, and just to make in uh, and to make a recap and about these patterns that we saw in these three portfolios, we have these uh, two kind of uh, wireframes or mockups that shows you the the anatomy of a portfolio and the anatomy of a case study. And it's all about, uh, on your portfolio, start with a brief introduction about yourself and below that, the list of case studies. And always remember that it's not about quantity, but it's about quality. And if you go to a detail of these case studies, each, uh, of, of, of one of these case studies, what you want to do is always put in there a summary to give context, to tell what the goal about the, the, the project was and what was your role on that project? And below that, you can tell how you got from A to B uh, by telling whatever uh, processes you use, like, I don't know, uh, wireframing, et cetera, but always keep first the, the, the summary or, and context and then tell how you did it. And at the end, you can show case uh, functional product or what was the outcome. And remember, this is a recommendation, a uh, good recommendation about uh, uh, um, uh, how your portfolio is going to be easy to navigate and to read. True. Uh, why don't we move up to uh, next questions um, session? Session. Okay. We have four already. I'm going to start reading them to you, and we can um, talk about it together. So the first one is by Redmi, which says, "Could you share any example in real life of, of a good portfolio?" I think we already did, mm -hmm. but in case it wasn't clear or they weren't as close as you, uh, to your profession as you would like to. You can always reach us and uh, on, on the links we, we left on early stages of the presentation and we can provide maybe more, more insights up to that. And then Gustavo Lepe left a very interesting com uh, question, which is, what would you guys recommend? To have both a web page with some of your projects, maybe six to eight, and also have a portfolio where you choose three or four for a specific company or just one option? This is a great question and uh, I'd like to take it. Okay. Okay. Cool. So if you're going to send it, keep three or four. Yes. We go back to don't bore your audience if be specific. This is a great opportunity to tailor those three or four from the six or eight that you're going to have. But always, it's a good idea to have your website with art case studies. So if you're, so you never know, um, maybe employers are browsing these, these kind of cases and they can have a, 
a much more deep understanding of who you are as a professional. So definitely both. If you don't have the time to maintain the resources or whatever, then go straight to the to the PDF and tailor it to your um, next employer. Right. Yes. And then Veronica Aguilar asks, what would be the biggest and most common mistakes in portfolio? I think we mentioned uh, some don'ts before um, this webinar, and they were like, uh, don't uh, just put in there like a bunch of images without context, because it won't tell anything. Always, and, and also uh, avoid to put like maybe 10 projects that won't tell anything, because um, they might be the same uh, kind of abilities that you use. So always have in mind to show like a spectrum uh, of abilities or capabilities you, that you have to show problems. Another common mistake would be to put like a bunch of text or to include information that you want, you don't want to include in there because it might tire uh, the audience or it might overwhelm the audience, like putting in there uh, all, the, all, the, all the previous job, jobs that you had or all your academic background, or the whole list of projects that you have been involved. So always be, uh, um, always get to the point in the fastest way as you can. Yes, and we have another question by Alfonso Maldonado that says, uh, what do you think about the portfolios or case studies that you can find at bestfolios.com? Can we take them as a guide for crafting our own portfolios? I took a brief look at the website and uh, it's good. It definitely looks good. But let's remember that there's no holy grail mm -hmm. for, for portfolios in the internet or for anything uh, for that matter. So definitely uh, look at those specific portfolios are uh, one at a time Yes. and figure out what do you like about each one. Definitely it's, it's wonderful that these pages exist, but don't take them for granted. Mm -hmm. Always use your criteria and figure out even... Even if you see a great portfolio, uh, how could this be improved? Uh, what, what do I change? Uh, how could I tell a better story? That's a yes. great question that you can ask yourself. And uh, yeah, to start, always uh, go for inspiration. That's great. But then move along to to do your own thing and do your own thing. Cool. And always uh, be careful of not uh, falling into the mistake of using like a super common template, right? Yep. Uh, so you avoid that to always try to express that you are unique and you are... Uh, uh, um, you have your own style to uh, showcase your projects, right? Yes, we have one more question okay. from Victor Urias. What if you don't have many projects or some projects that are confidential by the company you work for? What would you recommend to showcase? I am coding and designing my own website portfolio. So I also have it in the UX folio. Do you recommend doing a case study on how I did my website or is that too much? If this tells the story you want to tell, then put it inside. Now. We talked about in the last uh, webinar about non-disclosure agreements. Yes. There are workarounds that you can have, like state that these projects are confidential or maybe reserve those specific projects for when you can present them, present them to, to your future peers, hopefully. And uh, the thing is, just be transparent about all the things that you are doing. And if definitely you have something that you cannot show because it's confidential. That doesn't mean that you cannot show the process. Yes. You can show some uh, dummy images or some mockups yeah. that uh, adhere to the story that, that you show and then let them know that you're uh, presenting a fictional case based on a real case that is confidential. Yes, uh, and also in previous webinars, uh, they recommended about using or uh, following white labeling, which is uh, to uh, change uh, or you change the logos or maybe a color palette uh, so you wouldn't be, or your audience wouldn't be able to identify uh, a, a company. Another tip well, that we can give is to, if you if you can showcase a project uh, because of confidentiality issues, uh, you always have the opportunity to recreate that kind of mocks of screen uh, uh, with a different style, uh, but you will need to put like an extra effort for that. But it will help you to, tell uh, or to use that recreation uh, to tell how you solve uh, those problems. So that's another recommendation. True. For this particular case, if you're coding and designing uh, and you want to show both, then go for it. Show them how you decode it and how you design it. Maybe think about who are you showing it to. If it's uh, maybe an employer that requires or, or asks for those two, 
then by all means show it. If it's just one, then maybe think about on how you can present uh, different portfolios that show the same the same uh, case, but through different approaches to to code, um, to, to through the approach of code and through the approach of design. And uh, remember, it's all about uh, knowing your audience. And with that, we're gonna move to okay. the next section. We can move on then. So your portfolio uh, is going to be confirmed by images, videos, or GIFs. So our next subject is assets management. And first of all, as we mentioned before, what you want to do is to choose a platform where you are going to put your case studies and your projects. We have a, a list in here of these kind of platforms like Behance or Samples uh, or Medium. And the bad news about some of these platforms, about uh, Dropbox Showcase, which I uh, showed you before, the, the bad news about those platforms is that you will need to invest some money to use those. So um, you will always have the option to use like an old fashioned PDF. Do you think it's old fashioned to use a PDF? We were talking about this <laughs> and, and it's part definitely a, a healthy conversation around it. Um, we tend to think that with all these um, PDFs are outdated but you have to remember that a PDF is a format more than a, a living thing. So use that to your advantage. Uh, having a PDF means that you can uh, be very creative in the aspect ready that you're showing in the navigation you're adding to it. And uh, definitely they are super practical if you can make them um, uh, very compact. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that later. Yes. But it is a tool and it is a workaround also. If, you, if you're thinking, okay, I don't have a job right now and I don't have money to spend on these platforms. You can always um, mock up yeah. your portfolio in these platforms, figure out how's it gonna look. Most of the time these platforms will resolve the hierarchy of or the design of your portfolio. And then you can take that as an inspiration and try to replicate it or work around it um, on, a, on a PDF for yourself. That's a workaround that is pretty valid. Yes. Uh, so you are invited to take a look at the, uh, to these platforms. And we also have some do's and don'ts uh, when uh, as, uh, about asset management. That is correct. So do optimize for your platform. Um, definitely figure out what resolution you're gonna put everything. You don't want anything pixelated. Think about uh, the variety of displays that are out there. Uh, think about Retina. Think about um, um, high fidelity displays and keep everything con um, like compact. There are um, good image compressors out there, both free online and, and paid like Squash that you can use to keep everything super sharp, a lot of quality, but no weight at all. And uh, we will also recommend you to adapt to your scenario. Let's, let's say you're gonna present this portfolio instead of just sending. Then you don't need the text. So take it out, make a more visual case and guide your audience through your case study as if you were writing it, but telling it. And uh, last point is consider your limitation. Uh, if you're gonna send a video, how is it gonna be played? Who's gonna be able to play it? Uh, what if the link is broken? What if it's too heavy? Um, what if it comes in a zip and your recruiter don't, don't, has, uh, don't have that tool yeah. to, to unzip it? So definitely um, one big recommendation here would be keep it simple. And if you're using a, a platform, they most likely will take care of that, but always consider um, that you are working for that project and for that platform. And that's what's gonna help you uh, make sure everything looks nice. Uh, on the don'ts, well done for pixelated images, which we just talked about. Don't send a PDF that's 40 gigabytes heavy and that it takes me two days to download. Um, don't put too much text or, 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 or too, too little, images, yeah, no. too much images. And then again, it's all about uh, working, working with a purpose. Uh, who am I gonna show this, where am I gonna work, what, what's the story I'm gonna tell. And then uh, all these questions that were complicated are gonna start to narrow your way and you're gonna find out that there's a very clear path for you to follow and, 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 and complete your portfolio. Cool. And we're gonna share with you a couple of uh, tools that you can use to tell a better story. Yes, I mean, you uh, might be in a position where you don't have access to uh, tools that uh, will cost money, like for example, uh, uh, Photoshop or Illustrator, etc. But we nowadays we have a lot of tools that are out there uh, for you to use online. 
So you can perhaps uh, optimize some images or create some GIFs. For example, here on the screen, we are seeing uh, CAP, uh, which is a tool uh, that will allow you to create uh, GIFs uh, from videos or from your screen. If you want, for example, to uh, recur uh, microinteraction on a functional product or on a prototype that you made, uh, you can use this tool to recur your screen on a specific uh, area of, of the screen so you can create a GIF. And always remember that GIFs might be uh, very uh, low on weight to use. We also have Giphy Capture, which is uh, similar. It will allow you to record uh, specific parts of your screen so you can create a GIF and you can put that GIF in whatever platform you want to use. Or maybe if you are going to use a PDF, you can use a hyperlink that will take them to that link, right? Right. Cool. And then we're going to move to writing tools. Uh, you know yes. I love Dropbox paper. Yes, yes. I'm always pushing it through a team. In fact, this presentation, we... Made yeah, we drafted it in <laughs> Dropbox paper. Cool. And why we like it is uh, it's, it's all about just getting into write mode and, and go straight to the point. It has very few uh, functions that will distract you from what you want to to show it takes care of hierarchies for you and if you copy that to another uh, platform like Google Docs it would respect those um, those hierarchies uh, it's a great tool it's free it's a fantastic collaboration tool as well so definitely consider it for your workflow if you if you are um, having a rough time just getting into focus or, or your interfaces are distracting you great tool and Hemingway even better <laughs> this is uh, uh, a web app that helps you work in your syntax, on your grammar, uh, tells you what are you doing um, to complex that could mm -hmm. be simplified, what, it's, what could be approached uh, in a better way. And since we're talking about uh, creating these case studies sometimes in English, yes. this is a fantastic tool and it's free. Yes. So check it out. And moving on, uh, we mentioned that you might be in the position of create a PDF uh, to uh, create your portfolio. And besides optimizing all those images that you are going to put in their uh, text, or you might use some patterns for a background or, or to make the design more appealing, you might end with a heavy PDF. Uh, that's why we are uh, sharing this uh, tool with you. It's called Small PDF. And you are going to be able to put your PDF in there, and this tool will optimize it for you. And it has like other features. You can uh, make your PDF into a Word document. Yeah, cool. Split it, uh, make a PDF out of images if, if you don't have the, the software to do that. Uh, encrypt it, uh, unlock it, cut it. Uh, pretty much everything you wish to do with a PDF, you can do it. You have two actions free per day, so be mindful of that. But there's also a paid service where you can do whatever you want, yes. but still free. And also free pick. Um, are you looking for graphics that are free and can help you um, maybe speed through the design process? Maybe you wanna, you're not that visual, maybe you're uh, um, research heavy in your portfolio, but you still wanna make it pretty and tell a compelling story. Uh, this is a great tool to download uh, vector work. You yeah. can create the author in your portfolio, nothing wrong about that. And then you can modify it a, little, a couple of things so you can make it your own. Easily, even if you search portfolio, you can find a couple of, uh, of files there. I wouldn't recommend them because they're pretty basic <laughs> and used throughout the web. We've seen a lot uh, of examples with, with those, but if you take from there, definitely make it custom, make it yours and, and tell your story with them. Cool, and besides those uh, free tools that you can use to uh, craft your portfolio, always have in mind to follow design principles so you can uh, design your portfolio in the right way and for the users to be readable and to be uh, attainable and to be neat and clear. True. These principles are a thing on its own and we don't have time to cover them on this webinar, but definitely check it out. Um, there are many, many resources. There are medium articles, there are books and, and, and we can share that later. But if you're gonna do it, um, let's say hand or custom, definitely take this in, into consideration so you you end up with a quality project, not only from the standpoint of your case studies, but on the way that you're showcasing this information. Yes. We don't have um, any pending questions right now, so we're gonna move on. Okay, if we, we have any on. at the end, we will address them. So this is what we were talking about earlier, about um, staying active. Okay. So let's go there. And we can begin with uh, 
So imagine that your boss didn't have to read your resume because he or she already reads your blog. And by staying active, we mean that to um, always feed those other channels that are out there. For example, we're going to talk about them later, but always have material out there so you can support your personal branding. That is correct. Uh, we were talking about staying active. Yes, uh, we were talking about the fact that uh, by feeding those channels uh, that are out there, uh, for example, uh, like Instagram that we are all very familiar with, or like uh, Dribble or Behance or Medium, by feeding those kind of channels with projects or even work in progress that you have, you are going to create uh, and you are going to be part of the global community design so you will be active for uh, your audience out there. That is correct. Yes. You, you might think that the portfolio work is only when you're looking for a job, right? But always leave that door open for your employers to find you. Um, it's also great to see candidates being part of these communities. Yes. And we're going to tell you how each one of these will help you on, on depending on what you're looking for. Yeah, we have uh, these different channels. Each one of them has different purposes and different uh, uh, ways you can approach them. For example, for Medium, Medium is a place where you would want to put in there uh, uh, whole case studies uh, that will be text heavy projects, uh, but you can put in there as well images, uh, GIFs uh, uh, and videos. But Medium, it's all about articles, so they will be uh, heavy text, I'll have that in mind. True. And there's also a great community for constructive feedback. It's one of the most active communities and one of the, uh, they, they debate a lot. They put very important points uh, over the table. And it, right now it's all about growth and, and how to um, make those articles more rich. Cool. cool. So we also have Dribble, which is a platform uh, for designers. Uh, it is a platform where you can put uh, uh, mockups, designs, GIFs, videos, and it's a quick way to uh, get your work out there. It is also a platform where uh, it works as a sourcing and talent platform. So if you uh, keep your account in Dribble uh, with uh, a different projects or approaches that you have or work in progress, maybe you might get like uh, the contact of uh, a company or a person who is looking for uh, a specific profile for a project, right? That is true. And it's also very simple, very visual. People are very positive in this network. Um, the only downside is that you need an invitation um, to actually post these, these, they're called shots in Dribble. But other than that, it's a fantastic quick way to get your work out there and, and, and share. And then we move to Behance, which um, you could already know, it's one of the most uh, prominent platforms for sharing um, case studies and, and, and projects uh, related to design. Um, it's, a, it's a great visual tool. Um, we've, we've seen amazing case studies built there. Uh, it, it offers you a professional portfolio building service that you can pay that, that will give you a domain and more control over what you're showing and how, uh, custom navigation, so check it out. Um, they're partners with Adobe, which is great. Um, um, so there are some projects that could even be featured or, yes. or, or you can get flares and badges and, and that also adds to your professional um, persona. And they also do courses. So every day you can, you can log in and they will have webinars or, or tutorials or, or people, uh, very cool people in the industry showing you new skills. So definitely all around, go there, check it out. And if you want to use the free version, that's fantastic as well. Yes, and also it's a super cool way to make networking through this platform, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. So uh, for the last one, we have Instagram. I think we all know what Instagram is uh, it's all about. But uh, if you would use this platform as uh, a way to showcase your, your projects, uh, uh, designs, et cetera, always have in mind to put in there the right kind of content because you wouldn't want to mix like uh, super personal stuff or pictures of you on parties or, 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 or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but you, what you wanted to do is in here in Instagram is to if you are going to use that platform as uh, a way to show your personal branding or your projects to always be consistent 
and, and fill it with this kind of information and the content. And it's a cool way to get exposure uh, if you use the right hashtags or if you use like the right uh, 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 approaches on content, right? Yep, and, and talking about um, hashtags, there are some community events like 21 days of interaction design, yeah. 36 days of type, Intover. So these are great ways to join a global conversation. Uh, who knows, you might be featured and, and that, will, that will come with a lot of exposure. Um, think of, we, we chose Instagram Maybe it's not the most professional uh, platform, but it has a billion <laughs> active users every day. So definitely you want eyes, there are eyes there waiting for you to, to put your portfolio and, and find it in a very casual way. We are going to move into the final round of questions cool. for this webinar. And I'm gonna open it with one by Carlos Gámez that says, how about showing a portfolio with only personal projects or product ideas, but with no real clients? That's a super good question, and that it's a super good approach. Uh, in the case, uh, if you don't have uh, uh, projects to showcase, always uh, have or find the opportunities to uh, create something that will showcase your abilities and skills. And that it's a recommendation that uh, uh, our peers gave in, in previous webinars because uh, that question also arises: uh, uh, what if I don't have like enough projects or what if I don't have like a exp uh, background experience that, that, or projects that I made? A good approach for this is to always uh, practice and create projects, fictional projects for fictional clients where you can show that you resolve a necessity or a problem. There's always uh, uh, these challenges of improve uh, already existing apps, or you maybe uh, can uh, uh, make time for you to improve an already existing app or an already existing website, and that will uh, help you, and that will that will be uh, material for you to showcase in your platform. True, um, and this is also a great way to know that even if you don't have the experience, you know how these processes work, you know what roads to take to solve um, different problems. Yes, it's gonna be a little bit hindered by the fact that uh, you have no real feedback to work on and your decisions might look um, a little bit empty, but you can always uh, approach um, colleagues or, or, or peers that could act as fictional stakeholders that they can push back on some decisions and then you can get a real sense of it and you can um, address how you actually uh, fix some, some actual problems. Super. So I think we can move on because we don't have uh, more questions. questions. Yeah. So this takes us to uh, the fine or to the end of our webinar. Yeah. And the next thing we want to uh, tell you is let's do this. Uh, as Emilio mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, uh, we are going to be receiving uh, uh, your portfolios, uh, and it's a super good opportunity for you to, sh to, to follow all the recommendations and all the things that you learned to do through this series of webinars. So we are going to uh, receive these uh, portfolios by Friday 28th, uh, by the end of the day. Yes, that's when we close the, 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 the receiving, yes. and uh, from July 1st to the 12th, you're gonna get your portfolio back with uh, reviews and comments on our own and, yes. and our best uh, are gonna work on that. Yes, and you can send your portfolios uh, to that email, uxdesign at wasline.com. So uh, prepare yourself, uh, uh, remember all the things we said uh, during this uh, uh, series of webinars and apply all those things to create uh, uh, a super cool portfolio and a portfolio that will tell uh, how uh, you resolve necessities and to showcase your skills. That is true. So thank you very much, all of you, for being here in this webinar. You have in there uh, uh, the link to give us feedback. And this was Emilio. And you're Oliver. And on behalf of Wiseline Academy and Wiseline and our peers that were involved not only on the production but on the other webinars, we really, really thank you for, for being here with us, for giving us your time. And we hope to see you soon. This is goodbye. This Bye. is goodbye.